Next question. Good morning, Mia Radson from the Canadian Press. You sat down with the Premier of Ontario yesterday. We understand health care was probably a prominent topic in that conversation. Canadians are extremely concerned about the state of their health care system. When is this impasse between the federal government and the provinces over funding going to end? I would suggest that there's not really an impasse right now because I demonstrated, we demonstrated through the pandemic, the federal government was there to step up with over $70 billion in additional funding for health care. And I've been saying consistently, and we've always had the position that, yes, we will be there for more investments in health care. I think all Canadians know that it's not just a question of putting more money into the system. It's a question of making real improvements in the system. Canadians need better access to family doctors. Canadians need lower wait times for surgeries, for mental health supports. There are solutions that need to be brought forward that are on the delivery of health care that we are going to be working with the provinces because they have the expertise, they have the responsibility, but Canadians need results. So yes, we will be there with more investments in health care, but we need to be able to demonstrate to Canadian, Canadians that those results are going to be tangibly delivered for them. Prochaine question. Bonjour, Christian Noël de Radio Canada. À propos de GNL Québec, si Québec revient à la charge après l'élection, allez-vous être ouvert au projet? Et est-ce que c'est quelque chose dont vous avez discuté spécifiquement avec le chancelier allemand la semaine passée? Uh, tout d'abord, pour tout projet de cette envergure, il y a des évaluations environnementales, il y a un processus réglementaire extrêmement important. Le projet uh, d'origine uh, uh, de GNL Québec n'a pas passé les processus euh, environnementaux de la province du Québec. Euh, et ce n'est même pas rendu à notre niveau, à ce niveau-là. Euh, et évidemment, on accepte tous euh, la, la, la bonne décision que le Québec a prise, que ce n'était pas euh, le bon projet euh, au niveau environnemental. Si des gens veulent ramener un nouveau projet ou un projet différent, bien, ça passera les étapes réglementaires euh, au Québec et au Canada s'il y a lieu, mais je ne vais pas euh, m'avancer sur des, des, euh, des résultats de processus qui n'ont pas été faits sur un projet qui n'a pas été dessiné encore. Euh, on a parlé effectivement euh, de gaz naturel avec l'Allemagne, mais ce qu'on a toujours dit, c'est que oui, on va faire tout ce qu'on peut pour euh, vous aider dans le court terme, dans le moyen terme, dans le long terme. Euh, mais il y a deux choses. Il y a un processus réglementaire pour tous ces projets qui vont être respectés. Mais il y a aussi euh, la question de est-ce qu'il y a un, un cas d'affaires? Est-ce que l'Allemagne euh, a besoin de cette, euh, ce gaz naturel qui viendrait dans, les, dans la décennie à venir, mais pas dans l'hiver ou les deux hivers qui viennent où leurs besoins sont le plus accrus? On a eu des conversations, mais il y a encore énormément de conversations à avoir entre différents partenaires. Next question. Uh, good morning, David Aiken, Global News. Good morning, Prime Minister. Ministers, good luck with your new roles. Question for you, Prime Minister. Uh, there's the stories that a, uh, Canadian intelligence services paid um, a so-called spy informant this, uh, for information combating ISIS. This particular informant was involved in smuggling women, including a Canadian girl, apparently, into ISIS territory to be ISIS brides. I wonder if you think that's appropriate, that intelligence services were paying somebody? And then secondly is, Apparently, the Canadian government and the British government has basically conspired to cover up this information for the last five years, and that must concern you. Uh, obviously, we know we live in a particularly dangerous world. Uh, the fight against terrorism requires our intelligence services to continue uh, to be flexible and to be creative in their approaches, but every step of the way, they are bound by strict rules. Uh, by principles and values that Canadians hold dear, including around the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, uh, and we expect that those rules be followed. Um, I know there are uh, questions about uh, certain uh, incidents or, or operations of the past, and uh, we will ensure to, uh, uh, to follow up on those. Next question. Uh, good morning, Prime Minister Paige Parsons with CBC News. Um, to follow up on David's question, are you concerned about whether our intelligence agency, which does not have formal overseas remit went too far in recruiting an ISIS facilitator and then covering it up, and will you commit to a full accounting of what happened? Um, our intelligence services are subject uh, to rigorous rules uh, and principles that they need to abide by, including uh, upholding the values, the principles, 
uh, the laws of Canada, um, and there are rigorous oversight mechanisms that are in place with the clearances necessary to look into uh, the operations and the decisions taken by intelligence services in their work to keep Canada and Canadians safe in a very dangerous world. Um, we will continue to ensure that that proper oversight uh, is done and, uh, as necessary, uh, look at further steps uh, if, uh, if necessary. Next question. Good morning, Prime Minister. Ryan Tumulty, National Post. Uh, when Parliament returns in a couple of weeks, Canadians will have been going through a year of inflation now, a year of higher prices at grocery stores, for gas pumps, for everything. Are you concerned and are you going to be offering some new measures to address that inflation? We know that Canadians are facing real challenges with uh, increases in the cost of living, uh, with uh, prices at the pump, prices for groceries, challenges around housing. Uh, and we have, as a government, uh, been there to support Canadians in a range of ways, whether it was increasing the Canada Child Benefit uh, in line with inflation, whether it's uh, moving forward on uh, increasing the OAS for our uh, most elderly seniors, uh, or whether it's moving forward on historic childcare agreements that are saving thousands upon thousands of dollars across the country for families with young children already. But we know there's more to do, and we're going to keep doing that. At the same time, we have to remember uh, that the Canadian economy um, has recovered more jobs more quickly than even the U.S. has following the pandemic because Canadians were there for each other. We invested each other. We have historic low unemployment right now. Lots of people have jobs, but there are still real challenges and we're going to continue to do uh, what is necessary to support vulnerable Canadians as we move through forward, uh, taking into account inflation, but also being careful not to do things that will accelerate or exacerbate the in uh, inflation crisis we're facing. Next question. Uh, Alex Ballygall, Toronto Star. Um, just going back to healthcare in your meeting with uh, Premier Ford yesterday, um, he came out of that saying that you guys had agreed that there's an urgent need to address the crisis in healthcare in the province. Um, so I'm wonder wondering if you committed to anything new for the province to help with what's going on with hospitals, and if you discussed or shared your thoughts with him on any of the proposals they have, like uh, their bill to push uh, to free up space in hospitals by putting people into long-term care homes. As I've always said, I respect that it is uh, to the provinces to deliver health care. Uh, and provinces do it differently across the country, and they uh, have the full remit to make those decisions. But I also uh, reminded the Premier that I am there, uh, that federal government will be there as a partner to ensure uh, that Canadians get good, high-quality health care right across the country, including uh, by being there with more funding. Uh, but as the Premier pointed out, uh, it's not a bilateral conversation. There's lots of provinces as people are facing challenges across the country that need to work together, uh, and we will be there for, to do that. But I think everyone understands, and certainly the Premier understands as well, we need to see results for Canadians. We need to show that new monies invested in health care are going to deliver better outcomes for Canadians in a tangible way because that's what people are facing right now as a significant challenge. Next question. Cormac McSweeney with City News. Uh, the Board of Directors at Hockey Canada have released a statement saying they have full support, they're giving their full support to the executive team at Hockey Canada. Your government and uh, many Canadians have been demanding change in the organization with suggestions of a change of leadership as well. What's your reaction to the organization sticking with a team that's faced a lot of criticism for its handling of the sexual assault allegations? And is there a scenario in which you would restore federal funding to Hockey Canada if the executive team in place remains in place? You know, I'm not speaking just as a politician now, uh, but as a dad, as a parent, um, we need to have confidence in the kinds of organizations that don't just provide opportunities and activities for our kids, but provide so many role models and heroes to our kids and shape uh, our weekends, uh, our winters, uh, and our country. Making sure that Canadians have confidence in those organizations is a basic need. And it's fairly clear that both the government and Canadians in general have lost confidence in the leadership at Hockey Canada. And the longer it takes for Hockey Canada to realize that, um, the more difficulties they're going to face. 
en tant que politicien, oui, mais surtout en tant que parent, je sais à quel point les organisations qui sont là pour offrir des activités, des, euh, de l'apprentissage, des, des, euh, euh, l'esprit d'équipe, des communautés et de l'inspiration à tellement de nos jeunes à travers le pays doivent avoir la confiance des Canadiens, doivent avoir la confiance des parents sur la culture qu'ils sont en train de partager avec nos jeunes, avec notre pays. Et c'est très clair que depuis plusieurs mois, le gouvernement et les Canadiens n'ont plus confiance dans la direction de Hockey Canada. Et le plus ça prend longtemps pour comprendre ce fait qui me semble assez évident et de base, le plus ça va continuer d'aller mal pour eux, le plus il y aura des questions pointues sur pourquoi est-ce qu'ils ne comprennent pas à quel point ça prend des vrais...